Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Another episode from our Force Science series for you guys today. You guys liked our air hose size versus power and which universal is best for science videos. And of course, our extension length versus power video as well. And in that video, a lot of you requested we dyno the difference between impact and chrome extensions, as well as cheap versus expensive extensions to see if there's a difference between them and if so, how much. So today we're doing that. As we said before, your viewership and occasionally tools from our viewers are 100% of what makes this channel possible. So when you leave comments, we absolutely consider them. So for these extensions today, we're going to measure them, compare their hardness, then strap them onto the dyno to see how much power each loses versus our baseline run, and determine if there's a reason you should be using black versus shiny extensions and tightening your purse strings or forking over that cache when it comes to tools like this. So today we have a half inch drive, five inch long impact extension from Snap-on and a Chrome five inch extension from Snap-on as well that we'll be impacting on. Both of these are our personal tools. So hoping this Chrome extension doesn't explode like Chrome tools sort of have a reputation for whether that's earned or not. Then we got our five inch Nico impact extension from that extensions episode. Then we have an old, but mostly unused Chrome five inch extension from Harbor Freight. I bought this one quite some years back for home use long before Harbor Freight went sort of up market with their icon line. So if there is a difference, at least when it comes to power delivery between extensions, this should be a pretty wide range between options to showcase that. The reason the two types of tools exist, Chrome and impact, is suiting the needs of those two different uses, hand use and impact use. And according to Snap-on, impact tools are made of a medium carbon alloy steel with low hardness. This is so that they sort of absorb those impact blows and mar and gall rather than chip crack and break apart and blow up in your face. The Chrome hand use only tools, Snap-on says, are made from a medium carbon alloy as well, so possibly the same, but heat treated to a comparably higher hardness. This reduces wear over time when used by hand, but maybe is not suited for a life of hard impact blows. So let's see if what they're saying holds true for their US brand, as well as these cheaper imports from China. We don't have to read articles like these, of course, because we have equipment just to do that. Touching on their size, both Chrome extensions measure about the same, 0.616 to 0.619 inches on the shank but the impact extensions show some differentiation with the Snap-on being 0.624 inches and the Nico being a larger 0.647. When we're talking hardness on oxide coated tools like impact attachments, a diamond tip ultrasonic tester like ours doesn't require removing that finish, but for Chrome tools, unless we want to measure that hardness of the Chrome layer as well, we've got to remove that. So we'll take that off before the first test. Now, according to ASME spec, the hardness of a tool like this should be between 38 and 55 RC, which is a pretty wide range to work with all considered. Let's take a look. The Snap-on Chrome extension comes in at a very hard 54.8 RC, right at the tippy top of the ASME allowed spec, likely holding up to hand use wear a long time with those numbers, but we'll be using a face shield for testing like this when we're using with an impact for sure. The Harbor Freight comes in at a lower but still hard 52.6 Rockwell. So at least we can rule out it being pot metal in this particular case. The Snap-on impact extension comes in at a very low 40.1 Rockwell, not below the ASME minimum of 38, but some of the lowest we've seen on the channel. But this is something we've noticed recently with other Snap-on impact tools we're working on now. Quite low in hardness, maybe not out of the ordinary in this case. They must take that shattering liability aspect pretty seriously. We'll have to see how it holds up and transfers that power considering this hardness. The Nico impact extension comes in at a much harder 49.6 Rockwell. All being equal, this should be a more rigid piece when we're talking torsional axle transferring power. But that's a bit of a stretch of an assumption to say all being equal. These tools are almost certainly not equal. The Harbor Freight and Nico extensions are CRV, while the Snap-on pieces are, quote, medium carbon alloy steel, which almost certainly means in the US, 
a grade of chromoly. We can assume 4140, but we really have no idea, but certainly one of the few options that's common in the US that's considered a medium carbon content alloy steel that's both strong at 40 RC and 55 Rockwell. But you'll be paying for that differentiation as well. New extensions from Snap-on of this size will cost you around $40 a piece, while Nico sells three pieces for $12, and the closest from today's Pittsburgh Harbor Freight sells now for $10 on a four piece set. So we're talking two to $3 a piece in these cases. So let's see how that hardness and cost translates on the dyno. Do Chrome extensions make more power because they're harder? Do expensive extensions make more power? Up first is our baseline. To see what this Mako gun that we use for most of these tests makes today in this 10 second reverse. So that's 596, looking pretty good. Just two foot pounds off of what she made six months ago on this channel. Our first extension tested today will be the Nico, which we're inviting back to the channel, but have never tested alone by itself. So that's a 100 foot pound loss from the five inch extension around 18%. But alone, that's not very interesting information. Let's throw the other options from Snap-on into the mix. Here's the Snap-on impact extension. So mostly the same here, only a spread at the very end representing a 20 foot pound or 4% difference, maybe becoming torsionally limited due to hardness difference, but also that Nico being a larger shank size. Either way, it's kind of a tiny difference. Next up is chrome extensions, the first being the Harbor Freight, and that face shield going right on. So she didn't break, but definitely some difference there, just over 11%. Something we can finally call a significant change in these test processes. But maybe that's from it being chrome versus impact grade. Let's find out by putting the snap-on on there. We're going to highlight this run on the graph for you guys, just so it can stand out and be easier to see. So 475, essentially the same power as the other snap-on extension. It's interesting that the two budget extensions were made from the same material, CRV, and close hardness actually, but had such a wide difference in power transfer, yet the snap-on tools also assuming the same material here and a very much difference in hardness had a very close relationship of power. So does this mean you should use impact wrenches on Chrome extensions? or that your money might be wasted on expensive impact extensions? Well, possibly, but likely not. We're not saying that. We have the equipment here to provide you guys a look at how these types of tools transfer power and why. But today we haven't really determined either of these tools reliability or assess the value of each of these tools warranty. However, we do find it interesting that the very common assumption about Chrome tools and their hardness is not come into play in a major way today when we're talking about transfer of power and just them blowing apart in general. We're interested to hear what your guys' theories are in the comments. We'll be doing plenty more of these four science videos like this one in the future, so drop a subscribe to see more of these and of course more of our head-to-head -to -head tool testing on the channel. Thanks for watching.